Hey guys, um, in this video we're just going to be talking about some of the stuff we've been skipping on Global. And tonight um, joining me to discuss it is Dream. He is from the Global Exclusive Podcast. You can say hello, Dream. Hi there. Yeah, we're both, um, you know, we, we talk about this sometimes, like we're, we're kind of like irritated that some of the stuff that skipped. And, you know, just to like discuss it, we're going to be going over... Um, stuff that we've skipped on the global server up to the current point in time based on the JP server. So stuff in the future, you know, that the JP server would have gotten past the current point in time on global. We're not talking about that. Um, you know, we might, talk about, we might talk about it in the future if we skip it, but if it hasn't been skipped on the current timeline up to the Roka, Mog King, and JP, we're not going to go over it. And some of this stuff is like really, really old. We're just going to mention it briefly. You know, we, we, we've already cried our tears about it. But uh, if it's been skipped and I didn't forget to forget to check it on the list, we're going to mention it. So the first thing, you know, something we're going to just briefly mention is like story events. We skipped a lot of story events in the Seven Star era. Like you know, some examples on the screen here, you can see Cleon, Poppy, Nicole, and a bunch more. Um, you know, that, that that's like old news, but Dream, do you have anything to really say about yeah. that? I'd just say that, like, mechanically, like, even though the Lapis and a lot of the important rewards, like certain killer materials, were kind of redistributed elsewhere for people that actually care about, like, flavor and stuff, it's, like, really sad to see this type of event be skipped because they, they can actually be pretty good. Like, one, it's one of the oldest ones that I think I remember us skipping back in seven star but one i actually really wanted to see the story was elnath's one because oh yeah I, i've mentioned in a lot of places that chamber of arms story is actually really good and so yeah i'm disappointed to not see some of those stories that is true and um i will say um one thing to be kind of on gumi's side for this this one you know a lot of the skip stuff i'm pretty irritated about at the very least, I can kind of understand the reasoning they skip this is because they're mm -hmm. translating into nine languages. It's a lot of work. They're behind on schedule. I can, I, I'm not happy about it, but I can understand why this would be like a hard decision they had to make just to keep the game on track. So Yeah, it's, it's one of the ones that makes the most sense that they skip, I guess, workload-wise because of all that translation stuff, which is kind of a pretty large portion of what Gumi does. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and something else is the short stories we skipped. Uh, people probably don't even realize what this is. If you remember, like, three, four years ago, there were these little side stories. Um, I, we only got one batch of them. I think it was Eileen, Roy, and one other unit. Uh, these were, like... All those ones. Yeah, these were, like, really old. Well, there were, like, two or three more batches JP got. There were little side stories that gave you a slight backstory into the character, and it gave, like, quote-unquote, an EX skill to these units, like William and Marie. So we skipped a bunch of these as well um, way back in the day. I just figured I'd mention it. You know, it, they're completely irrelevant these days. The the seven-star units, the skills were bad anyway. But it was skipped content. They, they, they didn't really make much of an impact. Yeah, that's kind of like whatever. Yeah. Another one, and again, I guess it was translation work, so... This is like a long time ago. So I don't think they were so behind. This is like back before they even added all the additional yeah, languages. True. So that... I, th I think this was probably more like... This is like, no one really cares, so we're just not going to bother. I think is probably what it more was. Just guessing. Yeah. And something else is series boss battles. Now these, you know, a few months ago, I would have said, I'm really irritated we're skipping them. They're slowly bringing them back as like filler weeks. So we're probably going to wind up getting the remaining like seven or so we still haven't gotten. But we did skip all of them in the Seven Star era when they were quote unquote sort of relevant. They still kind of weren't, honestly. After after Kefka, they went really downhill. But uh, Yeah, JP definitely started phoning them in on skill set and stuff. So... I guess we can't blame Gumi too much for irrelevancy on them, but like if they are bringing them back now, they could do like a little more to buff the stats to make them put up somewhat of a fight. Yeah, we got the Rurse and Arbiter a few weeks ago, and it was technically buffed from the JP version. It was just it wasn't anywhere near enough, and we're getting Sephiroth series boss battle um, tomorrow. And again, I'm assuming it's going to be a turn one kill, but we don't really know until it comes out. But I would guess that's going to be the case. 
interested in it. I don't, don't actually remember seeing it on like how it was on JP, but this was the last SBB released in JP right at the start of the NV era. It was the only NV one. So I'm wondering if it might be a tiny bit more toothy, but I don't know. It could be, yeah. Um, one second real quick. Dream, I'm going to... Okay, there we go. I had to change one thing. Um, anyway, uh, something else is the the newest trial that we are technically overdue for at this point is the Archeo of Avius trial, the 12 races. These started up with the Secura banner and the JP server. Um, we got the Secura banner, what, two weeks ago? And we still yeah, don't... Yeah, only a couple weeks. Yeah, so it's not... So far. It's not super late yet, but it is, at this point, technically late. Um, so, you know, I just figured I'd mention it. I think these are probably going to be coming pretty soon. I don't. I don't think we're going to be skipping this. I think they're just yeah, I'd agree. delayed for whatever reason. Yeah, it might be because there were like JP had a large gap between the first and second ones. So I don't know. Maybe they're minimizing that by for some reason delaying the first one. Yeah, it could be. Um. Something else is the updated Coliseum. Now, this is uh, a, a little bit of a strange... I'm not sure if we can consider this a skip or just like a, a redesign. On Global, we got the Advanced Coliseum a long time ago, and JP never got that. Kind of recently, JP has updated their Coliseum to the Advanced. The difference is their updated Advanced is obviously a lot later, and it was a lot more current. Um, the, the fights were like not hard, but they were, they were, they were, they were tuned for NeoVision units. Um, some of them, and they gave some decent gear, like some really good resist gear, like a 50% wind resist hat, etc. And we don't have those on global. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe be because we got the old uh, advanced Coliseum, we're probably never going to see it. So we're technically kind of skipping the better updated Coliseum. What do you think? It makes it a little weird. It does make it a little weird because we got our own advance, but it would also be like incredibly easy to just rebrand it to elite coliseum and then give it to us i agree and, <laughs> yeah that, that would be so free mm -hmm. uh, something else we've skipped is boss rushes now we got a few of them i think we got two of them on global but they were yeah, um, I think, we I, two. yeah i think dream check we had four of them on the jp server so we skipped two out of the four um, and these are one of the cooler contents. Uh, you know, we kind of have like the same boring cycle of like MOG event, raid event, and well, we used to get story events, when we get those anymore. <laughs> but this is like something to mix it up, and there was, you know, I, I enjoyed these, and it's kind of sad that we didn't get these. Um, mm, yeah. yeah. And I will mention, JP started doing them again in the future, and the ones for Tune for NeoVisions are not due yet. We're not late for them. They're going to be coming a little bit later in the timeline. So we're probably going to be getting those, I would guess. But, you know, it is true that we still skipped a few of these boss rush events. Yeah, and, like, yeah, they're nice for just breaking up, um, like, event cycle monotony. In fact, like, a lot of these, JP has done, like, these kind of challenge events that only run once or twice, but they're just something a bit different to try out, which is sort of nice, yeah, for breaking things up. And then boss rush is sort of, even though it hasn't always been executed the best, the idea of having several fights that, like, aren't too bad individually, but just having to meet the requirements for all of them in the same team it is, like, a fun concept. So it would be nice to, like, not have that die out. Mm -hmm. And they, they could actually bring back the, the two they skipped. They could bring them back, that you know, just buff the stats, make it more relevant for new visions. And instead of, like, a dead week, like the current week where we're getting just item world, they could have tossed in the boss rush and it would have been so much more interesting for the, the you know, next week, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then Tower of Heroes. This one um, is a little bit probably controversial for me to mention because I, I'm kind of known for being, like, saying Tower of Heroes sucked. I don't even care that we skipped it. I'm glad we skipped it. It was a terrible event. But players, I, I know a lot of players that are that are global only players and didn't have a chance to play it. They're still like, I wish we could have at least tried Tower of Heroes on global. So what do you yeah, think? I, I think Dream, you said I, you, you you missed it. I I'm kind of in that boat again. I just want to try different types of concept content, and also I think while it sounds like it was executed pretty darn poorly, especially when with like things like trust abilities and whatnot but just the the idea of like having to pace out your roster of units and also not what like not worrying about gear and stuff and just having fixed gear both of those sound like con 
conceptually it can be a quite interesting type of content like maybe if they're done preset like gear sets for each each role type or something similar to like the automatic companions you get for story events and unit intro quests yeah the, that, like um... have have their, their tmr is tmr and some basic story gear that could have made it like, like a bit more functional and then yeah like there, there's potential there for pretty interesting content even if the execution was poor of the ones we got yeah i, I do agree the, the ones jp got yeah the idea of it was good it's just it was so many flaws it feels like instead of like almost redesigning it from the ground up they just decided we're just going to move on from this and uh, it, it has not returned in jp for like four months or something it, it's pretty much gone at this point and actually one one thing i have just remembered that's somewhat adjacent but um and isn't actually on your list here is the predecessor of that was the soul palace that had oh. like a bunch of of floors and I like can't... three different that there was like three different teams for each yeah I can't set believe... of floors or something i can't believe i forgot that because i loved that that was like tower 1.0 tower of heroes was like tower 2.0 um i loved tower uh soul palace altira was the the actual translated name yeah yeah i i really love that a lot of kind of kind of funnily enough a lot of jp players didn't like it they said it was it was like whale only it was too hard I, I, I disagreed. I liked it, but, you know, that, yeah, that's J also... JP is known for complaining about hard content at this point. But, <laughs> that, that is yeah, true. That, that's what I'm definitely sad I missed. And I think, like, based on what I did here about, like, the balancing of the final boss, like, Hate or whatever it was, um, like, getting that slightly later than JP schedule-wise with slightly higher global power levels and stuff, that could have been a really nice sweet spot. But mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a sh it's a shame that was fully missed as well, and that that's long gone. I don't think there's any chance we'll ever see that. Yep. All right. Something else. Um. Now this is not really like skipped content. This is more like version differences, and I, I figured I'd include it because it's a different, and it's kind of like the meme every single month. Oh, our global DB rewards aren't updated yet. But yeah, in JP, um, at some point I forgot the first one, but it's we're well past that at this point in global where it, it should have was... happened. I, I checked, and it was it was the one with Sol and Behemoth. Oh, okay, so it's actually not that, yeah, it's that not, late, then. It's not super late, but it is a couple DVs now that haven't been updated. Okay, but yeah, the, the big change is um, in JP, they started giving 2,000 Dark Matter for the top ranks. I think the top 100 ranks, and then as you go down. But basically, at every rank, it gave more Dark Matter than Global is currently getting per rank. Also, they added unit of choice tickets and lapis for the higher ranks, which Global has neither. So yeah. that, that, that's the difference between the two. Top, top 1,000 got lapis, if I remember correctly, as well as 7777. Yeah. And then... That was um, a bit of a meme. The weapons from Dark Visions. Um, currently, ours are lower caps than JP. When JP got the upgraded sword and rod... It went straight to rank 12, you know, plus 11, like 290 attack and magic. Um, we haven't gotten the harp at all yet, which JP mm -hmm. had at this point. So, you know, we're, we're like missing or behind on all of our Dark Vision weapons. Yeah, they're, they're definitely doing a slower rollout with these, though I do think we'll work up to that eventually. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely a slower rollout for both these new weapon types, because at some point JP really started quite, like, rushing through all the rest of them to get the full set and obviously doing them all straight to plus 12 or mm. plus 11 rank 12 whatever it's, yeah. <laughs> the wording is annoying it is it but is. yeah so yeah i think these are not being skipped but they're being slowed down which is a bit annoying but even even with the slower pace again without our dark matter upgrade from the rewards it's still definitely like i think outpacing our income yeah, this kind of goes hand in hand. Like the, the part of the reason JP increased all the dark matters per month is because they started getting more weapons per month as well. Mm -hmm. And something else we don't have is the arena ticket updates. Um, this is you know when you clear the arena, you get these red tickets you can summon on the arena pool. Well, JP like purged out a bunch of the useless stuff, like one percent trust moguls, the, the mini cactuars, the uh, I think that they took out the small pots. You can only get, like, medium or big pots from now on. 
Also, they updated the arena grid, which you use your arena points for, and they added um, Esper Ore. It's a really good source of Esper Ore in JP. I, I wish really they, nice. they would bring this to global because, um, you know, Esper Ore, we just, we just need more and more Esper Ore, and this was a great source of it that global just doesn't have. Also, like, I feel like there has never really been a time in global where I felt either the grid medals or the arena tickets really like felt worth using yeah i've got i've got i've got so much say that i just don't spend them because it just it just it floods you with the stuff you don't want like small cactuars and stuff yeah like i i barely even do arena and i still have like 2500 arena tickets Mm -hmm. so yeah it would be nice for both of those to actually have some relevancy even though pots are like stat pots are very in excess now, anyway. Oh yeah, the stat but, pots. Yeah, the, the, I don't miss the the esper ores would still be very nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, something else we don't have that JP got a long time ago is the item world rare update. So for people that don't know, in JP they moved the bow, the harp, and the hammer rare into the general pool. And this can stack with innate rares on weapons. Meaning, for example, those of you that are like running Cacteria's STMR, which is a magical fist, you can get the bow rare on it instead of just the useless fist rare. Well, it gets HP, but mostly useless fist rare. Um, also, they increase the percent of rares just across the board. Like on the JP server, I can't like give a direct comparison, but you see rares way more often in the JP server when running item world. Um, Global is just way overdue from this. It seems it seems to be skipped for good at this point. What do you think, Dream? Yeah, I, th- I think the the multiple rares definitely seems much nicer. And yeah, having having that bow rare available for the weird weapon types that don't have like an offensive stat that works for them would be really nice. And also just makes like you you can go for that bow rare on basically anything and with a deep and other role get it basically higher than all the available roles we can currently get except on stuff like guns Mm -hmm. so yeah i I would definitely like to see that update i would like to see even more updated with item world to streamline it but that would be a nice start and the rest is kind of on on to jp to do rather than gl Mm mm-hmm uh, something else we skipped is the Story Digest. So for players that don't know what this is, um, it, it's technically aimed at new players, but it's available to all players. Uh, it, it's it's like a set of like six or six or eight fixed battles, which take you through like the big you know hallmark moments of season one and two. And for players that don't want to spend, I'll just make up a number, three weeks grinding through season one as a new player. You can just go through the digest. You can get all the core points of the story. It is a lot of cutscenes, to be fair. It takes a while to run it. But you can go through all the core parts of the story, and in, like, two hours, you can get through the entirety of Season 1, and it lets you catch up for newer players that e- or players that just don't want to do the story but still want to get higher in the story to access to, like, you know, Season 2 Espers and stuff like that that you have to run the story to get currently on Global. Uh, and also, the big thing that being skipped... It does give a bunch of lapis, a bunch of you will see. That is probably just been have been redistributed on global. But the permanent producer jacket is kind of a big deal that global players just don't have access to. Where in JP, like the Mughal charm is now permanent, but for things like support units you want to make pass to provoke, the producer jacket is also permanent on the JP server, and it's really helpful for making pass to provoke. What do you think, Dream, about skipping skipping all the digesters? Yeah, I I think it it really sucks because it's like as you described it great in a bunch of ways for catch up i think from what i remember the fixed battles are actually like somewhat helpful as a better mechanics tutorial for newer players in certain aspects i think it went through like chaining and stuff from what i remember uh-huh, it did. and then yeah have, having the producer's jacket being permanent also really good one slight question i have just out of curiosity for the mechanics i know like completing season one digest unlocks season two and stuff and vice versa for season two digest and whatnot does it unlock like every stage in season one so you can just like cherry pick the espers and stuff or do you still does it only unlock like the first stage of the next one and you still have to progress through the previous season uh, if you want to get those espers 
That's a good question. I actually don't know because by the time this came out in JP, yeah, you, I, I, I was actually already current, so it was already it was already unlocked for me. That's a good question. Um, I, I don't know, unfortunately, though. Yeah. Also, it's worth mentioning we we said season one and two digest. JP also has a season three digest now. We're oh, not right. quite due on that because we were only just getting our last chapter of it right now. Mm-hmm. But that that would be like this or next month, and it seems we're not getting that. Mm-hmm. Or it's or it seems unlikely at least. And I think that that was also the source of Blue Mage Fina's prism, wasn't it? For it it was it was and um. In the JP server, after season three ended, um, we went through the season three digest, and that gave uh, a bunch of materials for the Blue Mage Fina Awakening. So Global mm-hmm. is probably going to do something to give us the, like I, Blue Mage Fina Awakening. Um, I don't think it's going to be skipped. I think it's just delayed. But uh, mm-hmm. we're probably not going to get it from the digest. They're probably going to add it to like you know special missions or something. Yeah, I, w- I was going to say something like this is probably going to have to be permanent rather than some limited event or login bonus so oh, i guess yeah. they might they might do they might do like another panel that seems to be a thing they like oh uh, that's probably true okay and something else we skipped is the star court shop so in jp they added um a source of your star quartz uh basically they took all of those limited time um main series final fantasy units and stuck them in the star court shop so for players that missed the event you could finally get a copy of, like, maybe you're just a huge fan of Rosa from Final Fantasy IV. You could get her seven-star version from the Star Court Shop. But for veteran players that got the event or that did the event, it's also nice because we could get extra copies of their TMRs. Like, a big one is Fran. That's another copy of Fran's TMR, which was... I def- I bought her on the JP server just for another copy of that. But um, on Global, we just we don't have it. Yeah, that's not... And, like... Yeah, as you mentioned, there's there's no, the nostalgia side of it as well. Like, I guess if we did get it, it would kind of take the specialness out of it. But I still very much regret selling my Magitek Armor Terra from like the launch week or whatever, and she was available to buy back in that shop as well. She was. She she is on the JP. Yep. Yeah, I think in conjunction with this, because a lot of those free units from the seven star era were blue mages and i think they they also added like a permanent way to unlock their skills they did they did there's a permanent it's, it's called the, the the blue mage room in the um in the jp vortex it's permanent um yeah if, if you missed their event you can go in there and you can run through like a couple stages and it gives you all of the blue magic for like you know quina strago quistus etc also kind of sad that blue magic just <laughs> kind of died as fast as it was added it's true it's, it's just not that good uh, uh, something else we don't have on Global that we're kind of overdue for. This is a client update that Global... Um, we got the client update that it came in on JP, but this was not included. Uh, this is like a, a, a technical thing. Basically, it added an option in the options menu. If, the, the, if you turn the option on, it says um, you want to re-download the game, and it does. And you can permanently disable CG movies. Now, the reason this is good is it takes the install, install size of the game from like... I don't know, five gigabytes to like one and a half gigabytes, which is great for older phones. But more importantly, if you turn it off, at least on my computer on the JP, once I turn this on, I loaded the game like three times faster because it's not going through all these files. So this would be amazing on global, but we don't have it yet. We're probably going to get it at some point. We usually get the client updates over time. It's probably just delayed, but at this point, we are technically late for it. Yeah, and it, it is a bit odd that we've got pretty much like the rest of the stuff that was in that update other than the arena rework, but didn't get that so far. But yeah, it would be nice to see that, especially if it does affect load times rather than just file size. Mm-hmm. But um, because like obviously if you have plenty of space on your phone, then that's not really an issue, but everyone's affected by load times. Yeah, definitely. And then these things, I kind of put these together like afterwards. Um, We've skipped... A ton of seven-star units. There's a, there's a list of something like, I don't know, 20 to 25 units. I don't know the exact number. But like Elnath, Cloud of Darkness, Theodore, Ursula, etc. Those have just been skipped from the seven-star era. Um, and they're just, you know, gone. Mostly they're irrelevant today. But a few of them had nice STMRs. Like Cloud of Darkness had a great mage STMR. That just is not available on Global. Um, was there any, like, unit that was skipped that you're sad about, Dream? The seven-star units? I don't 
I don't think I'm particularly bothered about any of them at this point, but yeah, like there was a nice some nice gear from them and again like Elner I more cared about the story event rather than the unit, but that week in general I guess I still am a bit sad about skipping. Mm-hmm. And then but yeah, um for, for the new units I'm not too bothered about any of the skips, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, latent skills, again, we just skipped, um, for one thing, on JP, every single series ver- series of a unit, um, from like the main series, you know, Final Fantasies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, even down to the friend point units, they all got latent skills. Now, obviously, we don't really care that these were skipped. I'm just, you know, for completeness sake, I'm mentioning that we skipped them. But we also mm-hmm. skipped quite a few latents for relevant units, like um, Folka is one that a few people used during the Kairos um, the Kairos. Uh, Clash of Wills last month. People were using Falka because of her mana restore. She got some really good latent skills in the JP store that Global just doesn't have. And, you know, so these, like, skipped seven-star latents can still be relevant sometimes. Like, for people that use yeah. Falka, you know, she was a lot weaker on Global. Yeah, there's a lot that, like, were, were nice at the time if we got them on time, but at this point, obviously, don't matter. But, yeah, it's pretty annoying that some of these stuff gets skipped. Like, a decent amount of them, honestly, like any of the units that would have gotten latents, if they later get enhancements or an NVA, or if they were just released with latents, those have always been like baked into their kit. But yes. yeah, there's certain ones that haven't been touched other than those latents or since then, and yeah, those are still still missing, mm-hmm. which was definitely disappointing at the time, but not as much as the next one. <laughs> And then unit enhance. Well, uh, there's actually two two sections. Um, un- unit enhancements. I'm speaking mostly for the seven star enhancements. I've actually got a different section for the Neo Vision stuff. But um, yeah. this is mostly again at this point we don't really care so much. But there's just uh, an enormous list of seven stars that just never got enhanced. And during their you know prime time, it would have been nice to have. You know, it's, that that time has passed. We don't really care anymore. But we did skip a ton of enhancements during the seven star era. Yeah. And like yeah, there were some like seven star ones. Wait, um just to check for later, do you have ones for like a section later for non NVs that got upgraded in the NV era? Yes. Or yes. is that I've got okay. uh, unit kit upgrades right down here? Uh, I won't I won't go into the specifics of those then, but in general, like enhancements being skipped just it it sucks because e- even if they don't matter that much for the meta wise, it's still just like feeling wise. It's nice to have old units that you, you know, like and remember using from the past feel like they're gaining some freshness and can be used for a little bit. Mm hmm. All right. And the next section is now these are unit awakenings, which is um, Neo Visions Awakens that Global has not gotten, that at this point in time, the JP server has gotten. So the, the big name one is Zeal or Zile. Um, everyone's heard, heard this story. There was like a big drama about it a few weeks ago. Um, we did skip him. Uh, at this point, from the producer's letter, it sounded like we're never getting him. So he's just dead in yeah, the water. I don't think so either. And yeah, he, he was like a really nice fire and ice support with like a few other niche things that were handy. Mm-hmm. He was, he was so definitely, definitely a, a useful unit. Yeah. Would have and been then, nice to have. Three. To skip, skip Medina real quick. Blue Mage Fina. Um, this one... This one's a weird one. Uh, technically, she's late on global. Like she was, u- she was available for things like the Will of the Oblivion and the Tetra Sylphide Chronicle Battle on the JP server because, but because global is like out of sync with story updates. Technically, she's not really late because we're we just yeah. finished season three, which is when she came out on JP. So technically, she should have come out this week because we finished season three. That's when she's supposed to come out. So she's like a week late at this point, which is not that yeah, big a deal. We, but um, yeah, and we mentioned like how her stuff is also tied to like the digest or was. Yeah. So, but then yeah. the one we absolutely skipped was well delayed was Medina. Now they put in the news that she's coming on a future banner, but that that could mean she's coming a week from now. She's coming three years from now. That that was not <laughs> much in much info. <laughs> But she was, yeah. or she is, a really powerful New Visions Awakening. Um, it's really sad that we skipped her. You know, I personally think it's probably because she is so strong as New Visions Awakening. They're like, well, she's too good to give for free. We're gonna, we're gonna do the Ramza treatment, and we're just gonna wait till she's not powerful anymore, and then you're gonna get her. So, so what do you think, Dream? 
And I, I would say I don't actually I don't know if she's like that dramatically powerful to warp things. Like I I figured because like the release week she was expected was during or right before the end of last Clash of Worlds, which was weak to ice. So maybe they didn't want her to warp that. But I don't I really don't think meta wise she is kind of that amazingly strong enough to delay significantly or needs to be. Maybe they still will, but yeah. I almost think like the community has given her a fair bit of hype as being like an actually good NVA and that's maybe kind of blown it out of proportion a little. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Yeah. Because I, I would say like I haven't I haven't run the numbers on her yet or recently, but like Cleome is an NVA that we're getting this week and she is also a very solid NVA damage dealer. And mm-hmm. I don't I don't think there's like too much of a dramatic power difference between those two. That is true. You know what it could be is because of her TMR and STMR, up, STMR upgrade, which we're going to get to in a That's different true. section, that could be like because those are so good, we have to delay her at the same time. But we're going to talk about them in just a little bit. But for now, we've got EX skills or NV just kit upgrades that have been skipped on global or skipped or just delayed, but we don't have them and, and JP did have them at the time. So just to go through some of them, um, the very first batch of EX skills, we've gotten all of them at this point, except for Rain and Gabranth. Those were also part of a batch one, and we don't have either one of them. Gabranth got was five. Rain? Was Rain actually part of batch one? I can't remember. Uh, Rain got, Rain's gotten multiple upgrades in the JP server. He's gotten yeah. EX skills, uh, that's what kit upgrades. Um, he's also gotten crown upgrades, so... I, I, I think, actually, now that I think about it, I think his upgraded LB was not part of the original EX skill. That was the second update. Yeah, or um, it might have been upgraded twice. Because, hold on, the, the first batch was six units, right? There was Gibranth, Aerith, Cloud, Sol, Packstar, uh, and I think Rain in JP. No, Lauren was batch two on JP. Oh, was she? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, the first batch was all ENV bases. Okay. So yeah, I think Ra- I think Rain was actually the sixth one there. So yeah. yeah, that's an early part of his upgrades that have been skipped. And then um, Gabranth is the uh, you know his his tanking upgrade. So so these these are the first two that we still don't have. Do you think this is because Gabranth is just too good with his EX upgrades, mm-hmm. or why do you think they're still holding these back? I, I don't know. I think they are being held back more than they should, and Gibrant is definitely like the big culprit here. But <laughs> it's 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 definitely not like anything special for the meta or any like particular reason. I can see that they'd be holding him back for. I think just in general they are delaying EX upgrades a lot and shrinking batches and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's been the one that's been kicked to the curb as part of that. <laughs> And then a, a different batch, um, EX skills for Final Fantasy II. Uh, Dark Knight Leon got 500 attack power, but more importantly, he also got a kit update. This is actually not part of his EX skill. This is just a base kit overhaul. Um, th- there were a few things changed. He got modifier boost. He got some updates. But the, probably the big standout was he got a single target 45% dark amplifier, which is the highest in the game for external oh, dark amp. And that's actually... Sell. a that's actually a pretty big deal like for for like dark visions and all and global just doesn't have access to that we have no one that can buff dark amp other than a 30 percent for yigni and um bulwark so this is a pretty high amp we don't have yeah that's interesting like i again i think for these batches it's less that they are looking at what those specific units are offering and deciding to delay them more as just they are uh, behind on the whole EX upgrade system and probably intentionally delaying the whole thing, which is really Could annoying. Be. And then Emperor, um, now, now, he, now just to be fair, he didn't become meta or anything, so most people probably just don't really care. This is more of a personal thing for me. I love Emperor, and I was looking forward to this. He got the chain cap increase. He got auto LB fill. He also got an enormous boost to Hellfire. I forget the exact number, but... I, I, I don't want to say a number and then be like, people, oh, that's, no, it wasn't that. It's His Hellfire became really, really powerful. Um, and yeah, we just we just skipped that, which which is real sad. 
Um, and then for Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy VI, we had recently the who was it? it was the, the, the Celeste banner. Um, during that banner in JP, yeah, there were a lot of updates we skipped. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Cyan and Celeste. Uh, yeah, Kefka, his EX2 skills gave him a thousand flat magic and the chain cap boost. Assassin Shadow got a huge upgrade. Um, basically, his entire kit got overhauled in the shift form. All his skills got huge modifier boost. He became really powerful, a short term chainer. It's all it's his Magnus abilities. They became, I forget the exact number, something like eight or nine hundred X per turn um, total for a few turns, and then his Magnus yeah, would run like out. Eight. Each each individual cast went from like around being like seventy to ninety to like two seventy per cast. Yeah, and then on um, all of them. and then Terra and Locke they got their crown skills on global, so they have those. But they also got um, both kit upgrades and EX skills on JP that global did not get. Locke um, EX skills got five hundred attack power and his normal attack upgrade. Um, also, he got auto break. That was a base change. Uh, it's kind of like. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Jesse, that just auto breaks at the start of the turn. Lot got that mm -hmm. as well. And then Terra, um, her EX skill was an autofill LB. And then her base form, Maduin Field, got boosted to 100% LB damage. That Global has skipped all of those. What do you think about these, Dream? I, I think, yeah, it's really sad to skip some of these because, again, like Lock, if you, or Lock and Terra, if you crown the then like you're going to be wanting to use them so it would be really nice to have these extra tools especially as they were all like at one complete upgrade package together in jp the nva ones i think don't matter quite so much but it would still be nice because there's that series locked ex battle with the limited turns it would be nice to give people more tools for that mm-hmm and then um, the other EX skill upgrades were um, Faisalus and Adele. Uh, Faisalus got, um, at EX2, she got autofill LB. At EX3, she got 1,000 flat magic. Um, and remember, this is in addition to her Chronicle battle, so it made her really high magic. Um, we got the Chronicle on Global, we just didn't get the EX skills. And she also got Mastery Crowns, we're going to talk about that in a second. And then Envy yeah, the, these two, yeah. these two rules at the same, the same time as their crown batch, similar to Terror and Lock. Yeah, these came out with the Roka banner in JP. So these should have come out last week on Global or this week for the Roka banner part two. But, you know, we're not getting them this week. So at this point, they are now, now late. And then Adele, her EX skills gave her 500 attack power. Um, it gave her the chain cap increase while dual wielding, which she, she, sh she should have had she, she since should've. launch. And then auto LB. And now in addition to these, they also got the option to use mastery crowns on them during this banner. Um, if you use your crowns on Faisalus, it changes her shifted LB to a stacking LB that goes to 300x modifier, which is really strong. And then Adele, her big 12 turn cooldown, if you crown it, it reduces the cooldown to six turns and it increases the modifier to a 3700x finisher. And just to put that into perspective, if, let me grab a calculator real quick. 350 times 7. Sephiroth, with Zidane's STMR, his max modifier is 2,450. So this is like like 70% stronger than Sephiroth's LB in terms of modifier. Obviously, his attack power is way higher than hers. But it's still a really yeah. powerful skill that we're skipping. So what do you think about skipping yeah, all this stream? I think, well, yeah, both of them definitely become like pretty high tier competitive, like... For Salus with her EX abilities plus like the modifier increase and her chronicle weapons, she gets almost like premium level magic stat and then SLB level modifiers. So that's that's pretty meta tier. And again, Envy Edel, a bit lacking on the attack, but incredible modifier to make up for it. So yeah, it's really annoying to get these kinds of things skipped or heavily delayed. Cause it it like at that point, it becomes very obvious. It's like, you have to buy the new units <laughs> instead. You can't use your old ones. So yeah, all, all of these like unit upgrades being skipped and delayed is just very annoying. It is, absolutely. And then something um, JP does pretty often is almost for every new event, they'll take some older 7-star units and they'll just completely overhaul the kit. Like, the... Uh, kind of like Sylvie got on Global. Sylvie was like, I think, our only one that got this. I guess technically the, the fan units from the first year 
um, got that as well during some point, like Malthazy, Cersei, etc. But yeah, JP, a couple. yeah, JP does this pretty often, and these are the ones that were skipped. Now, some of these are kind of irrelevant, like Kimono Fina. She's still, even after her update, is like, eh, who cares? But some of these were pretty good. Now, one people probably have heard about is Crown Prince Noctis. He was the first one they did this for in the Neovision era, and they boosted his damage to like Neovision's tier with the disclaimer that he needed a lot of support, but you could push him to the point of being relevant even as a yeah. still seven star. Yeah, on, on the time of his upgrade, he he wasn't topping the burst charts quite. They, they, he was like a fair, fair chunk below them, but with yeah, like the tons of support, as you mentioned, he had one of the highest potential damage per turns in the game because he can basically just do his full power every turn. Mm-hmm. And then some other ones that were pretty underwhelming were like Arden, Delita, Kimono Fina, Kimono Yaka, Luna Freya. These were like, honestly, no one really cares that we skipped these because they were just duds, but they did get updates. Gentiana, still kind of a dud, but she did give you an ice field for those players that really want an ice field and didn't have Terra. This gave an another, um, well, limited but free option to get that. Uh, Dark Cecil got single target Permanent uptime, 90% damage reduction. He is amazing to make a tank survive. Um, this could have been an absolutely god-tier budget option for Kairos if we had this available um, to put him on your team and keep your tank alive. We just don't have that, though. Or, like, the the Behemoth DV fight with unavoidable damage. That was another place oh, he could probably be used. Exactly. Like, I think um, Lord, Lord of Shadows got used there, and mm -hmm. DK Cecil could have done the same sort of thing, possibly better. Mm -hmm. And then Titus, um, th this is an another one that people kind of kind of did talk about because he's one of the, probably I would say he was the absolute best of the seven star reworks. He became yeah, an yeah. extremely good water support. Um, you know, my conspiracy theory is he was skipped because they wanted to sell Lord of the Seas Nicole because they're very similar. You know, Nicole is better, but Titus was like was pretty close in terms of just overall team water support. Yeah, because I think he has like the. Um... AoE long duration imbue, 25% amp, like a 130 or 135 imperil. And one of his like or extra things that he he had that was like a quite nice and unique tool was he had both perfect enemy dispel and perfect ally dispel spammable with no cooldown. Mm -hmm. And those were really cool tools to have available. Yep, and he had uh, a very small LB gauge within trust, which I used pretty often. Yeah, he was just, and he also got triple cast with a few chain frames. He just, he just became super good, um, and we just we skipped him. Yeah, uh, Squall got an eighty eight percent defense break, which would still be relevant today on global if we had that. Because for players that don't have Lauren and Venera, Squall would be your best defense break. Well, I guess no, actually we we can't even do locks ninety percent yet. I don't think so. Yeah, Squall would be no, the I best. The, the best defense breaker if we had gotten him. He also got a fire imperil, which is, you know, useful if you're using him. Um, VV was whatever. Sweet Luca. Uh, we got one of Sweet Luca's upgrades. We didn't get the second one. It just gave her, like, more amplifies and stuff. Overall, not, like, super big deal, but would have been okay to get. I think, just going back to VV, I think with, like, the potential mod boosts and stuff from gear and stuff, there was one of, one of his things, because he also got the, the same reflect chain passive that envy has he did so he was at, he was actually like kind of okay with his upgrades from what i remember let's add that note to him because yeah that is true i forgot about that um i think i think his his thing also kind of needed the um the vision card for seven stars which i don't think global oh, was yeah. late for i don't think we're late for that yet but once you can add the vision card that in, that increases modifiers and then you give him that plus the upgraded VV um, STMR, which we're going to talk about in a minute. That's that's the next section. Um, yeah, he did have relevant damage as a 7-star. That is true. That is true. Um, and then a few of these, these were kind of like, you know, whatever upgrades. And then Ace and Rem, um, for the most part, you know, no one really cares, but they were actually sort of useful for the Chronicle Battle, which is incredibly limited on options. And making them do, like, not great damage, but certainly more than zero damage they're currently dealing was helpful and we just don't have them either kind of sucks yeah because i think just remembering back to like a the amount of damage they did as seven stars and b like how much of a mod increase they got i guess like what they would have gotten should have upped them to 
about like those early-ish NVAs like PG Lasswell, that sort of damage level at a really rough estimate. So yeah, that can definitely be relevant for those EX stages. Mm -hmm. And then the last section is um, gear upgrades. Now, these are for the most part older things that we skipped. Um, at some point, I think starting with the Shantoto banner, they started doing the STMR upgrades, and we've gotten almost all of them from that point forward. But they never went back and like, oh, we forgot all these. Let's go ahead and do them. We just, we, they just, they're just, you know, missing in action. But um, yeah, it's like, well, a lot of these basically came alongside their associated yes. unit getting an upgrade. So basically, all of the units that we've skipped the upgrades for, we've got, we've also skipped their gear upgrades. Some of them we have still gotten the gear for, like um. The big one was Wizardish Shantotto's robe. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, a lot of them, when, when we've skipped the unit, we've also skipped the gear upgrade. Yeah. So from this chart, um, this is the original stats, and these are the upgraded stats, and I highlighted the changes in red. Um, so like, uh, Delita's sword, you know, it became a okayish dark hybrid weapon. Um, Subservient actually got 100% magic on it, which is pretty useful, <laughs> but they still didn't fix that auto damage. <laughs> that's, that, that's its flavor. Yeah. I'll take that away. And for some of these, I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but some of them, like Deathbringer, it got um, you know relevant attack power as a killer sword, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, Brotherhood, like Brotherhood, Brotherhood <laughs> got 50% beast killer, which is yeah, nice. I, I see just above um, Fina's kimono one actually looks really good. The 75% oh. killer on an already relevant um, robe. Yeah, that's that true. That would be really nice. That is definitely true, especially for the um, the upcoming Archie of Avius trial. If you don't have VV, VV caps very killer naturally, but you know if you don't have VV, this would have been a great option for that, and we just don't have it on global. Mm. It kind of sucks. Yeah. And then um, these I'll point out, these are the ones for Medina that came with her New Visions Awakening. Now these are pretty big. The TMR got 50% magic true wield, do wield on it, which is for the most part been STMR material. Um, mm. yeah, and then, it, it's like it's STMR level so I think overall like wouldn't cause too many waves in global with what we have available but definitely still nice to have like a cheap option of a really good magic material like that mm -hmm. and then her, her STMR it became a 220 magic rod with 50% LB damage and it gives a 20x modifier to all ice spells like Blazega um, Blazegia and uh, Freeze they all get 20x modifier to all those spells. This is, like, really good. This just completely blows away um, Milo's STMR as well as the Shantoto Chronicle rod. Um, so I think this is probably the, 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 the guilty party for making Medina be delayed right here. Yeah, that's fair. It is a really nice STMR after it's upgraded. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually think about it. One, one like, of these that glossed over was... Uh, old vv's mace of zeus upgrade oh yeah same, kind of same thing lower it it lowered in vv's power on launch a little bit because of those mod boosts but i'm thinking with that 20x mod on ice spells that probably also would give a fair bit of a boost to in vvv with his reflecting it as well as if we'd gotten the upgrades on seven star vv plus the vision card upgrade for him as well mm-hmm so it would have a whole chain of related effects of things being skipped. Yeah, and these, these, um, like, so like these, like, I wish they would go back and upgrade them. For example, Ayaka's hairpiece. You know, it's not like the biggest deal, but I use this in JP pretty often for the for the auto limit. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's just a nice, it's just a nice change that we should get. They're just nice. They they feel good to get, and mm. like they they're free. They're basically free to implement, and yet yeah, it's like. It's basically free goodwill from from your player base. Why not? Exactly. It just really hurts to have this sub stuff <laughs> that it all adds up so much. Mm -hmm. And that that was for the most part it. You know, I I just wanted to cover in this video, um, you know, bring awareness like some of the stuff we're skipped. S some of the stuff we're probably gonna get in the future. Some of this is absolutely dead in the water. Other stuff is just unknown if we're gonna get it later or ever. Um, but yeah, thank you, Dream, for talking about it with me and making the video. No worries. This was good. All right. That's basically it for today. Having a, ha having a brief look to see if there's, like, any significant feature stuff that we, like, would be expecting in the very near future but might be delayed. But, 
nothing super standing out hmm. from what I can see. Thinking about it, um, yeah, and I guess yeah, and I guess the, we... the master card unlock for like the vision cards on the seven stars that we mentioned a couple times. That's still a couple like a month or two out schedule wise. Yeah, so don't need to worry too much about that one just yet. But that's another one that I really don't want to see skipped just on principle. Oh yeah, definitely. And something else, I guess I just I real quick at the end, I'll just mention is we've skipped um, the Vision World. Uh, but that was a collaboration. This was probably because of the collaboration in fact, but um, it is technically a content we don't have in Global, which is unfortunate. Yeah, the schedule-wise, I think the only one we're actually past is the Mana one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, the um, Secret, Secret of Mana. The second, the second one that JP got was Xenogears? Um... Or was I, there one in between? Oh no, there, there was the Dragon Quest one as well, wasn't there? Uh, that, that 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 was a raid. Not um, actually, oh, I've got okay. my own list. Let me open this real quick. I know there is something in Vision World. Um, oh, uh, uh, Legend of Mana again. Um, ah, right. Uh, there was two mana. Ones. Pearl and Elizol was actually due two weeks after Roka, so that is due soon on Global. We're we're probably gonna skip that, I guess. Yeah, it it seems like most of the mana related collab events have been JP only. We've only really gotten like one or two of them and JP's had at least half a dozen over the years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that that one seems fair that we're skipping, but I hope we do see Vision Worlds in June because they just sound like better DV, better it, rewards, more it interesting. It is. It's uh uh, visually and thematically, they're definitely way cooler. Uh, we, we probably will get the Xeno Gears when we, we've gotten all the Xeno Gear collabs. So I, I feel that yeah, one's probably so. going to come when it eventually is time for it. We did skip some Xeno Gears enhancements, but eh. Oh, did we? Of course we did. Of course I, I, we did. <laughs> like we we only got enhancements for Ellie in that big like two week. Oh collab yeah, we thing. we didn't Whereas, get we didn't um, get Bart. I remember that we didn't get Bart's yeah. big upgrades. Yeah, because JP got them for all, all five of the Rambos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like Bart's ones were actually another another good support that would have been really nice to have at the time. Yeah, he would actually be in the seven star upgrade. I, I've actually used Bart quite a few times. Um, yeah, he, he got he got one of those complete overhauls for his seven star kit, which is really good. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, um, like in general with the, the unit upgrades, like the pure the pure damage dealer ones that like if you're not going to bring them to at least usable like I guess don't bother, but with any of like the support ones, it's just nice to have those extra tools available and feel like old stuff's getting invigorated again. Mm-hmm. But all right, hopefully, um, global, you know, takes notice and brings some of this over to our our side. You know, and certainly, I'm certainly not trying to say global is a bad server. I love global. I I enjoy it more than JP, being just straight up honest. But um, it could be even better. Is kind of the point. Yeah, definitely. It seems like a lot of the time it's we're getting the boring parts of JP plus some good global exclusive stuff. That being Clash of Wills. Exactly. All right, so I will see you guys next time. Yeah, and I will see you on the global exclusive podcast, I guess. Indeed. I had to plug it at least once. Oh, no, definitely. All right, later. <laughs>